All right, we are back for another episode of The Daily Show where we talk about interesting facts and trivia for everyone's daily knowledge. Thank you guys again for joining me today. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a good day so far. Um, if you're watching this early, I hope you're looking forward to a wonderful day um, for you guys. Uh, today is the last day, uh, not The Daily Show, okay? <laughs> Today is the last day of summer season here in California, USA. There we go. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to be under the uh, fall season. So, um, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but lately it's been uh, getting less hot or less warm in the morning. <laughs> uh, which I like, by the way, but when it comes to the... Uh, lunchtime or noontime uh it gets pretty warm and sometimes hot so it kind of it kind of messes up my um uh well not mood but more like you know sometimes i would feel uncomfortable you know because my body's gonna get used to something cool and then later on in the day it will be it will be warmer or sometimes hotter you know um but with that said we are saying goodbye to summer for this year. Um, fall, autumn uh, is here or will be here at least tomorrow, the next day. So um, question to you guys. Were you looking forward to uh, fall season? Are you guys excited for fall season? Um, I myself am excited to be sure. Um, even though I, 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 like, I like summer in general, but I also... Um, I guess I would I like fall also just because you know uh, whenever we we reach fall uh, we already are looking forward or at least me I'm already looking forward to uh, Halloween <laughs> and Thanksgiving so those two major holidays I'm looking forward to so yeah um, I hope you guys are looking forward to uh, fall season too, especially those uh, those um, holidays, the the one that I just mentioned a while ago. But with that said, uh, for today's episode, we'll talk about miniature golf. All right, uh, we'll talk about being an IT. If you guys haven't heard of an IT, we have an IT person here in the building, or not here. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm recording at home. I meant we have an IT person in the building. Uh, where we do our Zoom session, um, Hui, he is an IT person on IT staff uh, here at Discovery. Um, so we'll talk about what an IT uh, person does. And then um, we'll talk about gratitude also. Now, I like to keep the observances into, you know, like a positive, encouraging observances. And luckily, pretty much all of the observances we're talking about or or uh, being discussed here, The Daily Show, are positive. So, yeah. And then for our history, we'll talk about the... Uh, well, <laughs> now this one's not positive. But part of history, we'll talk about the uh, hurricane that happened in England like a long time ago. Um, and then the last baseball game played at the Yankee Stadium. Um, for our place of the week, we'll talk about Serbia. Um, well, the uh, national symbols in Serbia of Serbia. And of course, as usual, stay tuned for our stuff of the day. All right, with that said, first on the list, we got Miniature Golf Day. Miniature Golf was invented in the late 19th century in Scotland, uh, likely as a way to uh, allow women to golf as they weren't uh, supposed to raise the, their arms above shoulder level at that time. Um, the focus or the game focused on uh, putting, which kept arms low. Um, in the late 19th century, the sport across or the sport crossed the Atlantic, uh, and following World War One, it became very popular in the United States. Uh, <clears throat> the miniature golf boom started and lasted until late 1930s, when the Great Depression helped to dampen the popularity of the sport. Um, improvements in obstacles on the green by on the green by the Taylor brothers and Loma brothers in the 1950s may have been helped or may have helped the sport to once again gain popularity. Uh, 
uh, let me know or I guess I'll be asking you guys have you played a miniature golf before for those who were attending our day program um, you should have had experience playing a miniature golf because we had our you know uh, make your own or DIY uh, miniature golf course even though it's, it's 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 pretty simpler compared to the actual miniature golf that are available let's say for rent or for game outdoors um, but if you played our own version of miniature golf I would say that you've tried it <laughs> um, it's uh I was I would I, mean, I, I tried it myself too uh, not just in discovery but also outdoor um, and I would say this is fairly or not fairly this is this is easier than the regular golf and if you're asking me if I've, if I've tried regular golf no I haven't even though I've tried to practice um, swinging the club and the uh, I haven't played the regular golf myself but I did play I was able to play miniature golf with my wife um, back in February of this year and she <laughs> she was way better than me she she uh, she got more scores than me I I kept I, I, I kept uh, bouncing out of the course of the course <laughs> whenever I tried to hit the ball and uh, but it's fun it's fun because you're gonna be using some you know uh, knowledge about angles and physics basically you know you'll try to uh, what did I say a while ago like angle your shot uh, try to uh, foresee or try to, to uh, determine which direction the ball will go to because you're not going to hit it as as hard as the regular golf you know um, and it's it feels good every time you uh, get a score <laughs> so I guess in any kinds of sports uh, whenever you score it feels good right anyways the game is usually played on astroturf carpet or concrete so in my experience when I played miniature golf before I played it in a carpet carpet uh, texture um, there are regularly 9 or 18 holes uh, just like in traditional golf but of course unlike traditional golf there usually is no more than 10 yard distance from tee to cup um, again it's miniature it's like uh, the, the golf and miniature golf is like tennis and ping pong that's like that you know anyways uh, what do you guys think when you experience playing miniature golf especially for our students at discovery uh did you enjoy it i guess once we uh, open back up we can you know we, we can play th those again <laughs> that would be cool and uh oh another thing um i guess not related to miniature golf is our we golf you know uh for one of the games one of the sports we do in we sports uh, but it's it's not the same as it's not miniature golf but it's also not the same as regular golf because it's way easier you know to control it's all about it's just all about the controller compared to the realistic one so yeah um i guess we can do those again once we open back up you know but i really wanted to try mini miniature golf again with you guys it's totally fun next up we have National IT Professionals Day. All right, so this is a, an observance for uh, people to to I guess appreciate what an IT professional is. So uh, an IT first of all stands for Information Technology. Um, as far as the observance started, it was started in 2015 by SolarWinds, a provider of hybrid IT infrastructure management software. Uh, today again it is about all about the uh, IT professionals um, it is an all-encompassing holiday honoring all IT professionals no matter their discipline so if you're go um, a good well let's, let's see let's see an IT person can also be uh, can specialize in different things just like how you know when, when you say if someone is in a medical field um, it's it's not all the time they're doctors or nurses or has something to do with, uh, with, with, with I guess hospitals you know because you can be in a medical field uh, working in a home care healthcare, you know 
So same goes for an, being an IT. It doesn't always mean that you're working on. Uh, well, you're definitely going to be working on computer. That's for sure. But what I mean to say is that there's there are people who are specialized in networking, meaning um, they. Uh, they, 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 they work on connecting one computer to another or any other devices to another, make sure they communicate to each other, um, especially if there's a server where it's like a, a computer that where everyone stores their information and then a the client, the ones that you are using to access those server um, or the files in the server. And then there's also some IT who are specialized in software application, meaning that any kinds of software, well, not, not any kind, a, a, a specific kind of software uh, that the company would use. Um, this IT, if that's his specialization, then he's the one in charge in um, like training people how to use the software. And if there are any bugs or errors or some problems that the software is having a problem with or or you know uh the client not the clients but the workers the employees are having a problem with uh he's the one who's going to be trying to solve the issue there you go and i guess <laughs> i've been uh there's a lot of things going on in my mind right now so i think i'm i'm not a hundred percent uh focusing on 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 the daily show right now but don't worry we'll get through this we'll get through this uh, I and I guess additionally I just kind of like woke up today so yeah but don't worry we'll, it, it'll get better you know anyways um so examples of those honored include network engineers just like the one I'm I told you guys about uh, database oh that's another thing database also uh, uh, you know how data or information of something especially confidential information not everyone should have access to it so an IT who specialized with database will be able to set some levels and restrictions so like if you're just a regular employee you cannot access the file of like you know CEOs and or, or supervisors and managers and stuff like that right while if you're the CEO you get the access to pretty much everything so that's also part of an IT job uh, system administrators this is more like overall hardware software and the overall connection um, and, and and there are other branches of IT um, IT is basically like medical field also it's vast it's vast especially now that computers are a common thing and and, and very how do you say very uh, I forget the term See, I told you I'm not 100% today. Um, I mean, if, what I'm trying to say is that the computers are also with uh, implemented in medical medical field. You know, in hospitals, the uh, computers are there too. So IT professionals can also work in computers. Oh, in computers. In hospitals, you know, for their, let's say, x-ray or their, the machines that they use to scan to, to uh, do diagnosis, dialysis. Those are computers, even though it's there in the hospital. Um, so an IT uh, could also work in hospitals. So for today, uh, this is Hui's day. So, uh, well, he's not here with me right now, but um, I guess on the actual day of, of this, uh, you get the chance to watch it and you get to see Hui in one of our Zooms. Tell him, hey, Hui, thank you so much for... Uh, you know, being an IT and make, making sure that our Zoom is working fine and our internet's working fine. <laughs> and speaking of saying thank you, that's our last observance, or rather, third observance, because we do have some notable observance for later. Um, but yeah, speaking of saying thank you, today is also World Gratitude Day. Now, World Gratitude Day has been designed to bring the world, whole world, together in a day uh, that is all about being thankful. Um, world Gratitude Day joins organizations, nationals, and individuals in sharing their gratitude in a number of different ways. Um, a little bit of gratitude can go a very long way. Um, it is important for people to feel appreciated for everything that they do. Uh, maybe not everything, but uh, as much as possible if you could you know, if you could show your gratitude to someone who who 
has been there and helping you out uh, for I mean no matter what kind of help you're getting or assistance you're getting from that person or those people um, there are also many other benefits that are associated with giving gratitude so you know uh, being thankful results in a whole host of emotional and physical benefits for instance you can boost your immune system lower stress level and improve sleep by being thankful so i mean th those small things they add up you know especially in a work environment um if all employees just like work and work and work it kind of it kind of starts feeling autonomous and uh i don't know it just it, it would feel it would feel not good in general but uh, here and there if you're being appreciated and your co-workers your supervisors uh, your managers uh, thank you for your you know for, for the uh, work that you're providing especially if it's a good good work and they appreciate it if, as an employee you would feel good as a staff you would feel good and then it would kind of encourage you to uh, to keep it better or to, uh, to keep it that way you know to keep the performance in that standard because you uh, you realize that you are being appreciated with with what you're doing so um, yeah being grateful actually does help not just uh, employees but also your friends or families you know you show them how grateful you are especially be them being part of your life it means to them it means to them um, they might not show it you know <laughs> But they would, I'm sure, they would love to be appreciated. You know, who who doesn't? Come on, who doesn't? Everyone wants to be appreciated. And speaking of that, I just want to thank you again. I'm very grateful for you guys always sticking with us, uh, especially during these tough times. Um, that we're still doing alternative service. You know, our Zoom service. Uh, thank you thank you and i know some some of you guys are all getting bored already uh tr you know trust me us too as much as we can or as much as we hope so but i uh, will get there we'll get there uh for the meantime i'm just entirely grateful that you guys are watching our daily show and you guys are joining us in our zoom and having having fun and learning things with us um Especially the Zoom sessions we're doing to share more information and knowledge to you guys. So, thank you. Thank you. Now, well, I'm not going to ask you guys to say thank you back. But I'm going to ask you a question. How is, or how do you show your appreciation? How, are, how, how do you show yourself being grateful? Um, could it be you giving something, some, something physical to someone? You know, like a gift? Or do you... Uh, send them a message, uh, write them a letter, or call them, or giving them a big warm hug, you know? Uh, let me know in the comment section below how, how you guys uh, share or show you, you yourself being grateful. And I did say we have other notable observances in case you wanted to celebrate more if you have extra time, you know, in a day. Um, World Alzheimer's Day. This is not really a celebration. This is more awareness. This is an awareness. Um, <clears throat> this is to, obviously to raise awareness for the dire situation of people suffering from the Alzheimer's disease and of course the people around them. Because yes, it's already a given that someone with Alzheimer's disease is suffering, you know. But another thing you have to remember is that the people around them uh it doesn't take it easy either you know um a lot of uh, uh people suffering from alzheimer's disease cannot remember their their own family which which, which is is painful for the family member you know um a lot of um what do you call this a lot of things kind of still stay as long as you remember them but if if you don't remember it's 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 quite hard to uh to i guess keep that existence uh whether it be a person or or an event in your life so yeah it's a very serious thing 
Um, so again, first one to raise awareness. Um, the second one is pause the world day. Now, <laughs> I don't know if you can pause the world. I don't know if there's like a remote where you can just like press pause and then the whole world stops, you know. But pause the world day is a day to turn turn off all the extra noise in our lives that raises our blood pressure and stresses us out. On this day, the world should be paused and our troubles should be forgotten. There you go. I'm, I'm not... Uh, I would slightly disagree on the on the last part where it says trouble should be forgotten. I would say it, it's always better for the troubles or problems to be resolved. Yeah, instead of forgotten. Because if it's forgotten, it's it's not going anywhere actually. It's just like avoiding it, you know. And then it's, it may come back again in the future. But... Uh, resolving it would definitely fix it or, or take it away <laughs> so yeah um, anyways yeah pause the world day um, if you are stressed out in life which I hope you are not you know try your best to be more positive uh, today is a reminder where hey you know take a pause take a pause and uh, uh, be less stressful there you go <laughs> lower your blood pressure that's not good definitely not good um, Next up, we have International Day of Peace. Okay, there you go. Pretty straightforward, uh, which is actually a good combination match or co yeah, combination with uh, um, the third observance that we just talked about, which is World Gratitude Day. There you go. And then we got National uh, Pecan Cookie Day or Pecan Cookie Day, um, another straightforward observance. And then we got National Chai Day. So chai, uh, hopefully you, it sounds fam familiar to you, chai tea, you know, for chai, chai tea. <laughs> um, in fact, the word chai in Hindi means tea. So when you say chai tea, it kind of sounds like you say tea twice. <laughs> um, but anyways, it, uh, the Hindi word uh, just had a slightly different spelling. It's spelled as uh, C-H-A-A-Y as to compared to what we have right there chai so those are our no other notable observances for today if you want to celebrate more or if you can celebrate any of the main ones that we talked about all right today in history <laughs> excuse me <laughs> so in 1938 something not really so good um, but, uh, you know, it's part of history and the thing about history is that whether it be good or bad, we should be learning from it. So, you know, if it's good, then we tend to do it again. If it's bad, uh, part of history, then we learn from it and make sure um, it doesn't happen again or you do your best to make it not happen again. Anyways, 1938, we got New England Hurricane. So the thing about this, without a warning, a powerful Category 3 hurricane slams into Long Island and southern New England, causing unfortunate, the unfortunate deaths of 600 people and devastating coastal cities and towns. Um, also, called the uh, Long Island Express, the Great New England Hurricane of 1938 was the most destructive storm to strike in the region in the 20th century. Um, the officially unnamed hurricane was born out of tropical cyclone that developed in the eastern Atlantic on uh, September 10, 1938, um, near the Cape Verde Islands. Six days later, the captain of the Brazilian firefighter sighted a storm northeast of Puerto Rico and radioed a warning to the U.S. Uh, Weather Bureau. Uh, well, now it's called the National Weather Service. Um, it was expected that the storm would make a landfall uh, sorry landfall in South Florida and hurricane experienced coastal citizens stocked up on supplies and boarded up in their homes. Um, on September 19, however, the storm suddenly changed direction and began moving north parallel to eastern seaboard. So it had been well over a century. Um, since New England had been hit by a substantial hurricane, and few believed it could happen, um, hurricanes rarely persist after encountering the cold waters of the Atlant North Atlantic. However, uh, this hurricane was moving north at an unusual rapid pace, more than 60 miles per hour. Imagine that. Um, again, 
Uh, I don't know if you can fathom how fast 60 miles per hour, but that's slightly less than the recommend the speed speed limit of most of the freeways here. And was following a track over the warm waters of the Gulf Stream, with Europe on the brink of the of war over the worsening uh, crisis. Little media attention was given to the powerful hurricane at sea. Now, see, that's that's like uh, the main problem right there because people at that time apparently they're focused on the war that's happening they totally forgot or ignored the natural disaster that can occur so uh the result there was no advanced meteorolo uh, meteorological or the result is people were not prepared because also uh, you know there were no advanced meteorological technology at that time such as a uh, you know radar um radio boys uh, satellite imagery you know i mean there were radars already before or radars but uh again uh from what the history is telling us it's focused during the war is not really being used for detecting storm i guess um so um and again technology is not that modern or from 19 you know in 1938 so when it comes to uh, passing the information or the warning uh, about let's say that the hurricane it um, it didn't make it in time so by the time the US Weather Bureau learned that the category 3 storm was on a collision course with Long Island on that afternoon of September 21 it was it was too late it was too late for a warning so again th th these or this is one of those uh, negative parts of our history that we should be learning about you know um you gotta you gotta put into consideration pretty much everything um don't be just focused on one thing and forget the rest or you know uh, you're gonna pay the consequence so yeah all right we have another one 2008 more recent uh, the last baseball game played at historic yankee stadium so there you go uh <coughs> I was gonna say I'm not a big fan of baseball, but that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that we have the uh, the last game or last baseball game played at the historic Yankee Stadium. All right, moving on to our notable figure born today. The first one we got Francis Hopkinson, 1737. Um, he's an American author and composer. Uh, who actually designed the American flag. Um, the thing though is while popular imagination has led to Betsy Ross receiving credit as the designer of the American flag, it was actually him. It was in fact uh, Francis Hopkinson. Um, Hopkinson's stars and stripes design was adopted by the uh, Congressional, oh, I'm sorry, Continental Congress as the flag of the United States on June 14, 1777. Oh my gosh. Well, I gave you guys a heads up. I'm not 100% today, but we'll get through this. Nothing to worry about. Next up, we have Larry Hagman, 1931. Um, he's an American actor that had a long career in film and on television, but is best remembered for two starring role in, on the small screen. So in 1965, he was cast opposite um, Barbara Eden in the comedy sitcom. You guys know? I dream of a genie. <laughs> there you go. Um, and then in 1978, he took a role of JR. Wait, what? JR? Same name? Oh. Do you guys know that TV show that I have a name with? Or I have the same name with? It's a TV soap op opera. Well, no, it's not a TV. Well, I guess it, I guess we can consider that a TV soap opera, you know? Dallas. I'm talking about Dallas, that TV show. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they had a uh, a sequel. Um, I guess not so recently ago. It's just, uh, probably like about seven years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I didn't really see this TV show, so I, I just kind of uh, heard it in in the side, you know. Um, so yeah, so those two major roles are are the ones that are most notable of his performance and then we have another one today we got stephen king uh, 1947 
Now, uh, if you've heard of him, then you would know that most of his films are tied to something scary, like horror genre. You know, uh, though he also makes some science fiction and fantasy, but most of the most of the uh, movies that I know about him or from him, it's either suspense or horror. Um, he's the one who uh, made or wrote the uh, the story of the clown, <laughs> the scary clown Pennywise. And if you know that movie, it's a scary movie. You know, it, it, it also has a very simple name. Uh, let me know uh, what that movie is, Th- which they actually just remade like I think last year. You know, they they have a reboot of that movie that was divided into two parts, but. Yeah, there you go. Stephen King. Um, I know a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of our students are not a fan of uh, scary movies. Um, But I'm telling you right now, it's one of my favorite genre. But lately, what I noticed about scary or horror movies is that they they just pretty much do more of a jump scare than... uh, What I like is is something that would kind of scare you psychologically, you know, when it comes to... Uh, horror movies. It's not. It, it's not necessarily like ghosts, ugly, deformed creatures uh, behind you. You know, uh, in a dark alley or a dark room. Um, yeah, I guess it's. You know, it's scary. It 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 caters to some people, but for me, I would rather uh, watch something that is scary, but a scary that kind of makes you think, like, oh yeah, what happens if if, if you know if, if this is the uh, if. If, if that thing happened to me. So, yeah. There you go. Just letting you know. Um, anyways, his books have sold more than 350 million copies. Wow. And many of them have been adapted into feature film. And again, he, he's he got one of those books about that uh, crazy killer alien clown. Um, again, let me know the title of that movie. If Even if you didn't see it, you probably saw a thumbnail or at least a poster of it. It's... It's very notable enough. I mean, the clown looks scary enough to be remembered. So, yeah. You know what? I don't, I don't know if I, if I told you guys this, but I am not a big fan of clowns myself. I, I'm not comfortable around clowns, even even today, pretty much. So, I, just, I don't know. I, I just... I, I don't understand how people find them uh, funny and cute in some way, but for me, uh, I don't know. It's... They look scary, they got like the red lips and red nose and they look like they're smiling forcefully or forcibly. <laughs> is that is that the word I'm looking for? That's just like they're forcing themselves to smile, which is kinda creepy, so and that's just me. <laughs> Alright, anyways, uh place of the week we are going to Serbia and we're gonna talk about their um national symbols. Grey Wolf, first one. Um, Serbia is home to a wide range of animals, but none resonate quite as strongly within the national consciousness as the proud, brave Grey Wolf. A hugely important part of Serbian mythology and recurring characters, and a recurring character in the uh, nation's epic poetry, the wolf is more than just a symbol. But if we're going to be talking about the animal itself, it is most common. It is the most common wolf in the world, including uh, Siberia. Um, oh, and speaking of Siberia, I just want to make it clear out there, Siberia is not really a country. It's an area. It's a region. Um, Serbia, however, is a country. So, just letting you guys know. Anyways, gray wolves vary in size, weighing anywhere from 70 to 130 pounds, and then reaching lengths of 3 to 5 feet, including the tail, and standing over about three feet tall at the shoulder. So that's Grey Wolf, their national animal. Their national flower would be the Lily of the Valley. Um, It is well known for its sweet and strong fragrance. It is extremely poisonous woodland flowering plant, which is native all over the northern hemisphere of Europe and Asia. Um, It is a symbol of purity. Um, which you can tell by just looking at the flower, very simple, uh, and the petals, the color of the petals are white. Um, additionally, it also symbolizes sweetness and beauty. In the language of flowers, 
The lily of the valley symbolizes the return of happiness. Because of its sweet fragrance, uh, various uses and symbolism, the uh, lily of the valley is very popular in Serbia and because of the popularity, they ended up uh, taking it as the uh, national symbol or the national flower. And last part of Serbia we're going to be talking about, I just want to make it clear this is not their national <laughs> Um, sport their national sport is football um, and this is you can say it's one of their traditional sport I mean yeah tra well one of their most famous sport there aside from uh, football and basketball um, maybe maybe you guys will are asking how come I didn't showcase any uh, traditional game that like let's say small uh you know young kids are playing there well because i know more about this sport because i actually this is actually my sport tennis and the thing about this tennis in serbia is actually becoming more famous thanks to a lot of serbian tennis players uh for example the ones that you're seeing right there uh on your left uh the guy in blue um his name is novak djokovic and then the girl in yellow, her name is Anna Ivanovic. And um, they're just two of the world's most famous tennis players from Serbia. They, there, there are more, actually. There are more. And because of them, tennis in Serbia are becoming more and more um, well-known, widespread. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> there you go. Those are our national symbols in Serbia. I guess except for tennis, but tennis is very, very famous in Serbia, so. <laughs> Alrighty, going on, we have the uh, stuff of the day. We're going to be talking about Piglet for our Disney version animal of the day. Um, Piglet is, I mean, come on, it's in his name already, so. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Pig. There we go. Pigs are stout, barrel-shaped mammals that are known for their big appetites. Some kinds of pigs are wild, while others are domestic. And uh, speaking of domestic, some pigs are also considered as pets, not just farm animals that turns into food later on. Um, so anyway, see, yeah, farmers raise domestic pigs, again, not just for meat, yeah, that's one, um, which is called pork when you get the meat of pig. Um, and... Uh, what do you call this? And uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh no! <laughs> oh, the uh, yeah, being pet too, being a, an animal companion, right? Uh, several different names are used to describe pigs. So both wild and domestic pigs are called swine. Domestic pigs that weigh more than one, 120 pounds are called hogs. Um, the term can also be used to describe a wild or domestic pigs in general. Before giving birth to a female pig. Uh, it's called a guilt and then after her first litter she is called a so um, s o w the most prominent part of a pig like if you see one you would uh, you would notice this right away would be the snout like that <laughs> the snout so a pig snout ends in a flat rounded disc pigs use their snout to find food and they're in the ground and dig it out uh, wild pigs have sharp tusks like a uh, wild boar or warthog, which we also showcased before here. You know, domestic pigs do not have tusks, but they have tusk-like teeth. And then in the wild, female pigs live together peacefully, but interestingly, the males they fight a lot, so they usually live alone. Um, <clears throat> as far as, as far as their diet, they eat a wide variety of foods, including leaves, roots, fruits. Uh, reptiles and rodents um, while domestic pigs eat grains and food waste right. or leftovers I don't want to say food waste because it's not really getting it's not you're not wasting it if someone's eating it like the pig so leftover so plan of the day summer this is gonna be our last uh, summer uh, what do you call this plan of the day because the next time you guys see me it will be fall right so we got Canna, nothing beat or nothing can beat Canna's for sheer visual impacts. Their gorgeous leaves and striking flowers and bold colors bloom all summer. 
this tropical plant grows well in containers or in the landscape. Um, and then their bulb-like structures, or what they call the rhizomes, may be hardy in some zones and warmer. But in the other regions, you'll have to lift them from the uh, ground in fall, uh, store over the winter, and replant in the spring. So they are they, they can't tolerate cold weather, cold climate. So, I mean, come on, summer plants. So. <laughs> there you go. Musical art of the day, we have... Um, we still have uh, Backstreet Boys. I kind of forgot to put their name there, but this is their song, I'll Never Break Your Heart, 1995. Um, this song was released in Europe on December 13 um, as the second single from their self-titled debut album. So the song was first released in Europe. Oh wait, I think I just repeated myself. Um, I meant uh, the year after, 1996, for a few other mar uh, markets and subsequently was re-released in 1998 of the US debut album. So as far as the, uh, the what do you call this? <clears throat> the, the charting, you know, uh, how did it go in the chart? Uh, the song peaked at number 35 on the Billboard 100 chart in the US. Got word of the day, Equivoke. It is a noun. And let me spell it for you. We're still on the uh, nine letter words. So E Q I. Oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty much like messing up here and there for today, guys. I have apologies. Um, anyways, E Q U I V O Q U E. There we go. Equivoke. Again, it is a noun, and it means an expression capable of having more than one meaning. Or, if you think about it, it's more of a fancy way of saying a pun. So, uh, if you guys remember Joe always making some puns in our daily Zoom, well, he's making a lot of equivokes. <laughs> uh, there you go. Now, last part of our show, Tech Trivia Yahoo! Yahoo! Do you guys know that? Have you guys heard of uh, the Yahoo website, yahoo.com? Uh, I remember the time when, when Yahoo was a very big thing, you know, and then, and then Google just took over years after <laughs> they, they kind of uh, went down in popularity. Um, but anyways, we're going to be talking about Yahoo's original name. Do you guys know before they settled with Yahoo? They have a longer name. It's uh, Akebono. Dot Stanford. Dot edu, like education. Edu, education, right there. Um, if you're asking or if you're wondering why they settled for Yahoo, well, the name Yahoo was selected because it was derived from the uh, Gulliver's Travels slang Yahoo, which was a fictional race of beings in the book. So, there you go. And good thing they, they picked purple, because if they picked uh, blue, they should have changed their name to Smurfs. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just saying. But, there you have it, guys. That's the uh, end of our show today. And hope you like it, even though I mess up a lot. Hope you still learn something out of this episode. Uh, try Just try, I guess, just try to replay it uh, if I... If, if if i haven't been sounding clear apologies for that uh, but uh don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discuss in the comment section below see i'm i'm still kind of blanking out even though the end of, it's the end of the episode already but hey you know what i made it you made it thank you for staying with me and uh take it easy uh, maybe i should be doing that too i should be taking it easy and uh i will do my best to um, have a better episode next time that you uh, see me again uh, the only thing that will change next time would be the um, the, the plant because it will be uh, fall already so my showcase for the plant of the day next time we see each other in my episode will be fall version there you go anyways guys again take it easy and thank you thank you again so much gratitude to you guys for always watching and uh, joining us on zoom and i hope you guys don't get tired of it um i hope you guys uh stay with us um longer 
But with that said, um, have a great day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.